Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. For those that are watching the replay, it's, uh, what is it? 2.47, 2.48, so quite a few minutes early. down. I'm working on my July block. Hi, Gwenny. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Kathy. Yep, I have charm packs. I'm all set and go. I, I'm all set and ready to go. I have prepared some ahead of time and some ready to do. But I thought while well, we're just sitting here and waiting for 3 o'clock to come along, I've been working on my birdie block. I don't know how well this is going to translate to video, but can you see? Oh, there you go. You can see I'm using metallic threads on the fireworks. So I've got silver and gold. Strange enough, I actually bought these metallic threads to use for cross-stitching. When you get a blank canvas, you can use this to mark off the grid so you have a 10 by 10 space to keep track of where you are when you're cross-stitching. I happen to already have a silver and I bought a gold, red, and blue, so that's perfect for this project. Hi Jackie, hi Donna. I think this project is going to be really great for charity projects, Gwenny. It's it's so super quick and you can use anything because it's basically the rail fence. You can use it for anything you want. Let me put this away. Pull out the blocks I already did. Donna, that's very sweet of you to say. I worked on these. These are definitely not a light and dark or anything. It's just to use. I thought about grabbing some other fabrics to go with the charm pack, and then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to use the charm pack and see how far I can go with it. So these are the blocks that I've made already. I figure I will get 40. No. Yeah, I'll get 10, I'll get 10 nine and a half inch blocks using 40 of the charm squares. And these are just mishmash, so it's nothing that's going to stand out and be a specific thing. I didn't worry about having all the darks just because the way this charm pack is, there wasn't a lot of specifically darks and lights and everything. This is the Butterfly Garden by Ben Artex. Let me see if I can, there you go. You can see the different colors of all the different fabrics. There are a couple of different colors of the bicycles. There's three of these flower pot ones. There's three of the flowers. And then there's like four with butterflies on it that you can hardly see. I was thinking about, i will go ahead and make a, a sewing machine mat with this. The only thing is, is we'll talk about it more, but with the charm packs, I'm cutting a 2.75 inch uh, rectangle off of it. You're not just cutting it directly in half. I didn't want to, didn't have time to play with it this morning to see if I just cut them in half, what I'll end up getting. Maybe that's what we should do while we're waiting. Let me grab something. charm pack. I think these are already cut in half. 
You might have to trim it up, but that way you would get the entire use out of it. All right, let's see what happens. I need four. So one to two. One to two. Good way to use up our time while we're waiting for everybody to show up. And a red and a yellow. Thank you, everybody. I think the fabric designers, they do such a great job choosing colors and designs to go on because the flower pots have like lilacs in it so that it goes with the purple, but it, then it has some flower pots that are more towards the pink, so it matches with that. The bikes have blue on them, so then it goes with that. So I thought that was really good. They did a really great job. My creative brain doesn't go towards designing fabric, so I will let someone else do all of that work, and I will just create something fun with it. It's like a rail fence. Well, it's pretty much exactly a rail fence. So you have to make sure that everything is equal. The width and the length have to match equally. So if these are a little bit off, we'll probably still end up with some scraps. But by cutting them in half, you might be able to come up with just a random size square that'll work. worried because I have an idea for the scraps anyway, so I'm not too worried about having leftovers. When I was figuring out the numbers for this morning's video, I was just basically going by the normal square sizes we have. So we have the six and a half, the nine and a half, and then we have the 12 and a half. So we'll see what this one ends up out of. All right, so when we sew two of them together, yeah, see this is, five inches long and it's four and a half inches wide. So we would already have to trim it off, but we will be trimming off a small amount compared to what I have left here. Like I said, I'm, I've used this as part of my design feature, but if you use two charm squares without, and you trim them at two and a half inches, you'll end up with a four and a half inch block. So that will get us an eight and a half inch block when we finish them. I think that's what it'll be about. Gwenny will correct me if I'm wrong. She's really great at doing the math. But that would work out really good to use up that entire charm pack. Plus, like I said before, a lot of times it's nice to trim off just a little bit because my ends are never, ever, ever even. So this way you can trim off a little from each end. Use your center stitching line to help you line it up. And then you just trim these two little pieces off. I think that's pretty good. Oh, this one looks pretty good. If you're working with scraps, it's really great. It sounded right, right, Gwenny? Sounded right. It seemed good to me, too. When you're playing with scraps, you can just take a small amount of whatever you have and just put it together and see what it ends up turning out to be. And then you can use your good fabric or your real fabric to create what you want. And that just gives you a bonus block. You can always turn it into a coaster or a mug rug or something like that. 
Something doesn't look right here. That's four and a half. That is a smidge longer. Because smidges count in quilting. I also noticed when doing the blocks that you really need to pay attention to how you put them together. I love the scrappy look too. All right, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with well, what I'm going to do with those leftover strips. So you have an option of what you want to do, but I think using it just cutting your charm square in half works out really well. I know a lot of times you just have some like random charm squares left over. You don't have an entire pack. You can always bring in a unified color for your background. If you did all of your backgrounds in white, then you can use your random scraps and charms and whatever. I think I rushed this one too much. I don't think it's going to come out quite square, but it'll give us an idea anyway. you can use the stretch of a block to your advantage. You don't want to stretch too much though because then you get some weird wrinkly puckery looking things. so perfect block this measures yep eight and a half inches there we go so now we have that knowledge and look it's three o'clock what perfect timing hi Nancy hi Rose hi Carol welcome 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 we were just playing now I have the leftovers from this charm pack That green threw me. So this one's a Marcus Fabrics. This is Aunt Grace's Flower Pots by Judy Rothermel. At least it's got 42 squares to it. You know, for just a couple extra fabrics, you know, give me duplicates. It kind of irks me a little bit when a jelly roll has 40 strips instead of 42 and a charm pack has 40 instead of 42. It's just a little bit, mm. Hi Judith, where it's 106, yes. You guys get some hot temperatures over there in Arizona. I don't know what it is today. I know we were getting up to like 96 or something. I have to warn everyone, we have a severe thunderstorm coming this afternoon. We've had one every day for the past week. It's starting to get dark out. I haven't heard any thunder yet. But once the thunder and lightning starts, then we're going to have to turn off the sewing machine. And chances are we'll probably be best to shut down the live stream because the power has gone off four times every day this week. We've gotten three to four inches of rain every day. My yard is squishy when I walk on it. That's very, very sad. I mean, I love all the rain. I feel like, not that it's my fault it's raining, but I, I put this word out to the universe and I said, dear universe, please give us some rain so that when the neighbors start lighting off their fireworks for the 4th of July, nobody's house is burned down, nobody's yard catches on fire, 
nobody has any damage to their cars, you know, so that everything will be wet and there won't be an issue. Well, the universe answered, we've been flooded. Oh yeah, it rains all the time in Portland, Vicki. That's not an issue, but we're having severe thunderstorms where it, the, the thunder just rolls for like five whole minutes and the lightning is crazy. I had so much water in my yard, two bunny rabbits drowned this week in it. I've had it almost come into the house. This is like hurricane um, rain that we've been getting. It's crazy and we're getting it every day. Some areas, the roads are still flooded. You just, you can't get into the neighborhoods. People are stranded in their homes and everything. It's been pretty bad. I would love to send some rain your way. You can, ha it's coming now, probably about a half hour, 45 minutes and you can have my rain. Clock of fabric for leaders and enders. She said she can't use a block from another block as leader ender as people think it's part of a current. Oh yeah. This is great for a no-brainer, Nancy. Rose, you can have some too. There's plenty enough for everybody. I'll send an inch off to four different people. Yeah, exactly, Gwen. It does confuse people when you're doing it for a video. You have to be really careful when you're doing videos because this a little bit just throws them off. Like you guys will leave comments with some amazing tips and I'm like, I knew those tips, but I couldn't show them in the video because I found if I put, I've got gnats everywhere. I found that if I put too many tips and tricks into a video, it confuses people. So there's different ways that you can like turn a tote bag or turn a circle for the tortilla warmers. And you know, you can do basting stitches and all that, but I can't show all that because it just throws people off. It is Gwenny, just sit there and just sew. And it really doesn't matter since we're not doing a pattern. Now, before we get started, I'll show you something I learned this morning when I was sewing these blocks up to test out. There is one thing you need to pay attention to though. Let me put my drink down. Joetta, she finally made it to our live. Welcome, welcome. When I was sewing these together, I wasn't paying attention to the layout when I sewed the block. So I had these. And if you look closely at them and really pay attention, you'll notice to get this pattern to be horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, you have to have it in that order. So this first one needs to be a vertical. I stitched a block where the first one was the horizontal and then I couldn't get it to line up. It was exact right here. So I'd have, I'd end up right here. I'd have another horizontal right next to it. So I couldn't line it up. So when you're sewing them together, that's the only thing you really honestly have to pay attention to is to make sure that it's going the right way. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which way you do it, which one you put here, but whatever you put in that first upper left corner, you need to make every block the same way. That's the only difference because we're not sewing rows. If we were sewing this as a row, which you could, you don't have to sew this into a block, you can make it into a row for your quilt, then you would just automatically, you know, flip your little rail fence back and forth, back and forth. But as doing a block, we need to pay attention. Hello, Marie, welcome, welcome. I've done all kinds of crazy things and messes things up. Before we get started, for those of you that are just showing up, we want to just show you a little thing that we were talking about before you guys came in. I was figuring out block size for this morning's video and I was going for your standard blocks, your six and a half, your nine and a half, and your 12 and a half. Well, actually I did the six and a half and 12 and a half and I thought, oh, well, what can we do with maybe a charm square? And I came up with the nine and a half, but here is the nine and a half inch block we're gonna work on today. I am using Butterfly Garden for Ben Artex. I don't know if this is still available. This is just something that was sent to me, so that's what I'm using it because the colors are really pretty. I really like these colors. 
For the nine and a half inch block, I cut each of my little rectangle logs at two and three quarters inches, 2.75 inches. And that leaves me with these leftover rectangles because I didn't cut it directly in half. I can't put these in my block. If you want to cut your charm pack directly in half, can you do them as quilt as you go? Hold on one second to that, Sylvia. Anita, well, I come in a little bit early, Anita, just to make sure all of the technical stuff is working and to make sure the live stream actually starts up and everything, but we don't actually start on today's project until three o'clock. What we did do is we did play a little because if you cut your charm square in half because you don't want to have any of this leftover waste, I've designed a sewing machine mat or mini wall hanging that specifically uses this waste. So I'm going to use this. But if you don't want any waste except for a little bit of trimming, yes, Mr. Iron, cut your charms in half for two and a half inch strips. And then when you sew them together, you will get an eight and a half inch block. The only difference is, is when you sew these two strips together, they're both two and a half inches by five, this and this won't match. This is already five inches, that's gonna be standard. But when you sew these two together, it's gonna to drop down to a four and a half inch block. So each of these little four quadrants is four and a half inches. So you need to trim on your length here down to four and a half inches. So you can take a little bit off this end and then square it up that way, just like we would if we're doing like fabric cutting strips and stuff like that. So that kind of works out that way. That's the, that's my son's iron that I've been using since mine has started leaking too much. And it, it beeps loudly. So you can use a charm pack with basically no waste because that little bit you're trimming off on each end, a quarter inch off each side, I don't consider that a really wasting any fabric. But for this one, I'm going to get 10 blocks. I'm not sure if I'll use them all. I might just do you know, maybe two rows of four or something like that. I think this is gonna end up being bigger than a sewing machine mat. But after I have this sewn together, I wanna see if I can do a thin, narrow border around here. And then take these strips and add them in like that. So maybe a nice yellow, creamy yellow border to go around it and then add these logs to go around this way. Does that make sense? That was my plan for these leftovers. So it might end up being more like, it could be a table runner, or it could be a couple table toppers. When it's all done, I will play with the squares and lay them around and see what happens. So there's that. This, I will go ahead and cut these and turn that into something too. Just because this is already a partial that was used for something, I don't remember what I cut them in half for, but I kept them all together at least, so that was smart. So these are already cut, so I can try to keep each project in a little basket like this, so I don't have to worry about it. Now I'm using Charm Pack, and it's a full charm pack as far as I know I didn't count the squares. You can use leftovers from a charm pack and mix them up. If you were to take this actual pinwheel part here and then these four pieces would be your background like from this morning. So let me pull that out. So here's the six and a half inch block from this morning. If you were to use your charm pack as this red honey squares right in here, and then you were to use whatever color is gonna work for yours. So maybe I could use uh, probably just a white for this one, and I would make these four strips white. Then it would stretch my charm pack or my leftovers and every charm pack I can put together because they would all have the background and you can mix up your blocks all over the place so it would be scrappy but it would be controlled because all the background would be the same. I think my chat froze. 
One second, everybody. Let me refresh my page. So I think that would work really well. So depending on the colors of your charm packs, you can mix them all up. Because sometimes I have leftovers of like holiday ones. So I might have some Halloween ones. Or you can just go right into your scrap bin and see if you have, maybe with Christmas coming up, if you have some Christmas fabric, you can cut it into whatever strips you want. The trick with this is, as I mentioned with that charm pack, when you sew them together, when you sew these two pieces together, whatever this width is, it has to be cut like that. So you have to cut a square. That's your goal, that your two strips, just like with a rail fence, that your two strips are gonna end up being a square. With all of these left over, I might just go ahead and cut these up and turn these into blocks also, instead of doing it all the way around. One side would be your background color and the other side. So you would have a light and a dark and that would give you your best contrast. Uh, let me see if I put, so it all would depend. I think you could put it, for me, just to, you could test the block out and see if you put it in one spot or the other. Like this one, this green is the dark. If I wanted it there, I would just have to spin it. Since the block is a square, I think you should be able to put it on either side. But I would, just to not have any concerns, I would always put it on the same side. If you're making a strip set, you can just sew the two together and then you can flip them around. Sometimes it's easier to just do the same thing over and over again and not take any chances. Because if you're just getting here, when you put this together, you need to make sure that your upper left corner is the same in every block. Otherwise, you won't be able to get that rail fence look. So the upper left corner here of all of mine are my verticals. When I put one together the wrong way and I had this horizontal one up there, I had to switch it all around. It didn't work out. Gwenny likes to pre-cut lots of scraps. For the types of projects you work on, Gwenny, I think that works out perfectly for you. I learned not to cut my scraps because I never know what I'm gonna need until I need it. So I, this way I can work on log cabins, I can work on crumbs, I can take the random scraps that are in my red bin and I can cut two and a half inch squares from it, or I can you know, make hexagons or something. It works better for me to sort by color and design versus by having specific sizes. I tried sizes. Now, for a lot of people, sizes work perfectly. That is what works for them. So these are my charms. So you have your option of cutting them in half and get an eight and a half inch block. Or like me, I'm gonna cut mine at two and three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna get a nine and a half inch block. I'm just gonna stack these up for me, cutting them in stacks of four works for me so I will just stack these up okay I'm going to do five because I have two left over so I will be daring and dangerous I tried to figure it out, Gwenny. I wanted to keep it in my four, my little four things still so that I can move them all around and adjust them. And I tried to, you know, you ever take those um, intelligence tests as kids where you have to take the cubes and spin them around and open them and flip them around? So I was trying to spin and open and flip mentally and I said, you know what, forget it. I'm just gonna get the seam ripper out. It only takes a second to rip the seam and then I just was able to flip them around properly because I tried as I said I tried to mentally flip flop them around and I couldn't get it to work so when I'm cutting mine at two and three quarters to get that little bit of a larger block I am making sure after I cut them I take these pieces 
then I immediately put them into my little Ziploc baggie because I know I will accidentally mix them in and try to sew them together when I shouldn't. Hello, Lucy. Anita, I have that a little bit and I did that only because I have a bin with two and a half inch squares because that's the size I cut out for the little corners when I do tote bags. So I gave myself a little two and a half inch square bin. I had a whole bunch. I was using my go cutter to cut all these different squares and everything in different shapes and I ended up just not using them. Oh, I think so, Gwenny. The whole spatial relation thing we do that a lot as quilters. So I'm just going to lay two down next to each other just to see how it goes. Like these are, they're not similar, but there's a lot of blue and a lot of blue. So I'm gonna try to see if I can not have two together. And look, that worked out really well. Because I'm a little concerned about the severe thunderstorm coming through, I'm only going to sew one block together in a little bit. So in case we get a disaster area, if we still have plenty of time and the storm hasn't hit, I'll just start sewing together the charm square ones that we worked on earlier. For those of you that are popping in late, go back and check the replay if you want to see the beginning 10-15 minutes when we sewed the charm squares together. I, had a I have a container with tumblers too. I love tumbler quilts. Wimbledon, huh? I didn't know Wimbledon was on. I know it's the Tour de France. Because Pat Sloan told me about that this morning. I've only been watching the news enough to get the weather. Quarter inch seam, 2.0 stitch length. What's great about this block is because if you're using scraps or even if you're using the charm square, if your block, when you sew it together, instead of it coming out at five inches or whatever it comes out as, you can always trim it. So if yours came, if all of your blocks ended up coming out at four and a quarter, for example, you can trim all of them to be the same. It doesn't matter if your blocks match my blocks, your blocks just need to match your quilt. So whatever your seam allowance, if you haven't quite found that perfect quarter inch, when you sew these two together, sew two together and measure it, and you just need to turn this into a square. This part is already set, so we know that's five inches. So when we sew this together, we just have to see what that turns out to be. You could use this as a leader ender. It's great to chain piece. For one of those days, if you have a little container like this and you set up the project when you have a brain that's actually awake and working, then you can have that project set up. And then when you have a day or a half hour of time that's extra and you just want to sew but not think, then you're all set for it. I've been finding I like to do that a lot lately to have all of these little bins set up Hexies from a jelly roll, June and July is sport filled TV, yes, yes. Gwenny is very, very organized. For what Gwenny does, she needs to be super organized. That's how you get so much done. When you figure out what you enjoy making, even if you make five different things and you have to be like Gwenny and have all of the different pre-cut sizes, once you have yourself organized, you'll find that you're going to create time. It takes time to prepare these. It takes time to go through your fabric. If you have a Rubbermaid tub, six Rubbermaid tubs, and the fabric is just put in there, even if it's folded neatly, it's not organized, you have to go through all of those bins to find the fabric you need. So if you have things already set up and organized, and you create little projects, whether you have baskets or those plastic containers from the scrapbooking with lids, if you have yourself quilt kits pre-made for yourself, then when it's time to just sit down and sew, you'll have that project and you'll know where everything is. I am forever putting a project away for a few months and when I go back to it, I don't have the fabric I need because I borrowed it. 
I, I'll, I'll get more later. I'll just borrow this white fabric from this project. It'll be okay. And then when I go to work on it, I don't have the fabric I need. Some of you guys are midnight sewers. You sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, so you want to sew and you're tired of making string blocks. So something like this is a good project. As I mentioned this morning, you can use the jelly roll and then just cut down to the sizes that you need. Donna, it's one step at a time. I did the same thing. I gathered up all of my scraps many years ago. Gosh, probably about five or six years ago now. And I took them out of this drawer and that hidey hole and I put them in two laundry baskets. And then every day I would set a timer. I started with just a half an hour and then I moved up to an hour. And every day I would take an hour and I would press the fabric and I would trim it down to I like straight edges. I don't like things that look like some monster's been biting out of it because you cut it for different things. Because I make bags, I made bibs and burp cloths, I made stuffed animals and different toys. So mine were never even squared up edges. Not square as in a two and a half inch square, but I like straight edges. <laughs> I pull a handful out, press it all really well, and then make those scraps pretty. And then one day I'd go through and I would organize them all and put them wherever it would work for me. I don't have that system anymore. I've now moved on to about the third system from that. But the system I have now, I have been using for quite a while. It's been working really well. I need to tweak a couple little things because I have, with the zipper pouches and stuff, I end up having, you know, novelty and pretty fabric like this that I need to find a home for. Did you see how I turned that around? Because I can't iron on the birds when they're upside down. Totally silly, but we all have our own little quirks, but I can't iron on birds upside down. Fabric specific project, all the fabric goes in the Ziploc baggies, pattern. Yeah, and that's the way to do it, Jackie, because otherwise you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and you're not gonna have the fabric when you need it. Oh, if chaos works for you, sure, yes. If chaos is your way of going and that's how it works for you, I say go for it. Chaos worked for me for many, many years. And that's, you know, when I was still working and homeschooling Robbie and stuff, Chaos was great. Now, I'm at a different stage in my life and I want to be more organized, which is quite unusual since I spent the last 50 years living in chaos. We had the clean laundry chair in the living room for many years. We, oops, we didn't fold our laundry or anything. It just went into the chair. And when you needed something, you went into the chair and got it. And that, if that's what works, that's works. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it's just one of those things. Now, if you're doing a light and dark, you want to press to the dark. I'm not really, since I don't have a background, mine is more, you know, scattered all around. It's not definitely, not, I don't want to call it chaos, but it's not organized. Organized chaos, I always think that's good too. So I just look at it and say, oh, well, let me see, I think this will be. And this is why I don't have the little whirly gig in the center because I'm not choosing, you know, a specific thing to be dark and light. That's got to feel great, Gwen. And you know more is going to come your way anyway, so it doesn't hurt. Unless you have a specific plan for the fabric, it's nice to be able to donate it. I 
I have a friend that likes fabric that I don't like, more of the silver war and the the flowers along that line and stuff like that. So it's really great. So when you guys send me stuff that doesn't work for me, you're always like, share it, throw it away, do whatever you want with it. So I usually save it for her. And then, you know, it's, she has fabric to play with and then I have fabric to play with. Hear the thunder? All right, I'm gonna sew one block together and then I got I have to unplug the sewing machine. I don't take any chances. So here's my left one. So that's a vertical and I'll put this one this way. And since I have this blue and this blue, oh, I can put that blue out of there. I'll put, so this way I kind of have something in there. I have two plaids and a polka dot. But it's all, for me, I was just looking for that soft touch so that everything was kind of just soft and gentle and nothing harsh and dark and bright. I didn't want to have any robin fabric in here. Before I trimmed up my blocks, I measured them to see where five inches was. And on this block, I should say on this charm pack, five inches was on the outside of the pinked edges. So when I measured everything, I measured it from there. That's been crazy weather. And it's been scary storms. A lot of times when we get severe thunderstorms, I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. But these have been quite scary lately. Even my brave little s'moresy cat, she was even scared for a few days. And then this time I'm gonna press it to this solid so that I don't have to worry about that seam doing the just get it done quilt tip where I push it over a little bit with my fingers and give it a gentle finger press push and I find that helps so much to get my blocks to be the proper size that's what I thought too Lucy I thought this was really sweet compared to some of the fabrics I normally work with and I actually love these fabrics and the designs on them I'm really quite happy with this I would choose this fabric definitely over this. I like these colors, but the pieces of fabric and each of them are just a little bit too busy. So then you have to pay attention. So this is what I did the first, that one time that I messed it up. So I have to make sure that I give it this way. So I have that there this last seam because I can see lightning on the corner of my eye everywhere had a package come in the mail today I'm so happy it came before it rained because the rain's been coming out of the east and it's been slamming into my front door to the point where I can't open it it's the wind is too strong the rain is too hard machines put into a surge protector and all of that but the sewing machine is this one isn't super expensive but still $150-$200 is still a lot of money and I want to make sure that I take care of my investment and I don't take a chance so the sewing machine's off if you guys want to keep chatting we can do that until the power goes out Oh, Gwenny, it's hard. I don't, now J Jordan um, presses hers, you know, Donna Jordan really like finger presses. I just kind of, I just kind of tickle it, you know. I just want to, I just want to push it over and I want to 
give it a little bit of a pat down, you know, just to make sure I don't have anything puckery. Make sure that my seam allowances over here are laying flat. And I just give it a little finger roll. I, I'm not doing the hard fingernail press. This won't work for anything. This is like nothing, but it's a good setup for me to come in this way. And I just gently fold down and push just slightly over to that side. And then I give the seam a press. Yeah, I, re I yep. Now, I do take chances with things like TVs and stuff, but since I live alone now, I unplug everything I don't use. Except for the microwave, because I find it's annoying to plug the microwave in. So if I'm not using it, it's unplugged. It's turned off, it's unplugged, and that's just how it is. Because there's no one else to worry about it, because I'm here alone, they can't complain. Yep, it's unplugged. See? All unplugged. The iron's unplugged, that's unplugged. It's going to rain now, probably. This one doesn't look as bad today. The sky, I can still see sunlight through some of the clouds, but it's going to last probably about an hour and a half, two hours, if it's like the way it's been the last couple days. You have solar power. I would still think that lightning can be an issue though, right? Even with solar power. I don't know enough about solar power. Except that my husband used to always call up and complain to the electric company. If you keep raising these prices, I'm going to get hooked up to solar power. And they're like, you can't do that. He's like, watch me. So I was thinking, these are nine inches. This sewing machine mat here. Let me see what I've got here. The sewing machine mat is 26 inches. So that would kind of work out just as is. And then I can take the leftover pieces. I can either do the really pretty quilt and put this all the way around it like a border, or I can just sew this together and then sew these together and create something with it. I also thought about putting these together if I have enough to create a panel for a tote bag to where you just sew them together end to end and then you do like the brick so that it alternates like a brick house. There is that. So I guess I don't know how to count. I got a lot less than I thought. Oh, I counted four pieces in each block, not eight. That's the difference there. My math was off. Because I was thinking it would only take four charm squares to do that. Good night, Lucy. Bye. Yep, I'm all done sewing. You can go ahead and, and you know, go, go to bed or whatever. Yeah, I was thinking a little brick tote. So it looks like this is going to be about like that. And I don't think I have any fabric that will go with this to mix it in. I could always, if I was really desperate and I really wanted this to work out because I made plans and I told my friend I was going to make it for her and give it to her for her birthday or whatever, I could always sew these together and then trim these down to fit these. Yes, it would be a waste of fabric, but if I had already shown someone the pictures of the fabric and told the whole story of what I was going to make and then it ended up not working out, I would have to make a second plan. Yeah, because the surge protectors, 
Now, and you never really know when your surge protector is gone. Now, they have a little light on it. So I have a little red light on it, and when that light goes away, it's not the power light, it's a separate light. When that light goes away, it means lightning has struck that surge protector. I'm supposed to throw it away and get a new one. But what happens if it malfunctioned and lightning had struck it and I didn't know it? Or I wasn't paying attention and I didn't see the light? Because if your surge protector is on the ground, on the floor of your, your sewing room, or if it's behind something, like where your TV is or something, you don't always see it and you forget to check to make sure. So if your surge protector has been compromised and damaged, lightning can still hit you and then you know go into the surge protector. What I thought was crazy is, I know you're not supposed to shower and do dishes and stuff with lightning, and you're not supposed to talk on the old-fashioned phones when you have the phone line in the house, but last summer we found out someone got struck by lightning while sitting on a toilet. So if there's a electrical storm with thunder and lightning coming, you make sure you go pee before the storm hits. Because that's all I can think of is, oh my goodness, if my house got struck by lightning or something happened while I was sitting on the toilet with my pants down and someone had to call 911 and I live alone, I mean, how long would it take someone to realize mom got struck by lightning with her pants down on the toilet? That would be horrible. So stay away from the windows. Unplug all your sewing machines. Don't do dishes. Don't talk on the phone. It's just crazy. Yeah, I'm the same way, Jackie. Mine are unplugged. I, I do the thing every time I'm done for the day, I go through and I unplug everything. And then before I go to bed, I open up all the I open up this door and the fabric room door to make sure there's no the lights from the the surge protector is not on because I charge my headphones at dinner time. When I leave the room for the day, I plug in my headphones that I use, my little wireless headphones, so they charge up. And then after dinner, I come in and I plug them. But sometimes I forget, so I always make sure I do the rounds. And just like after it rains, I make sure I check all the rooms to make sure the window didn't crack or anything and no water came in. Marie, I can't go pee on the toilet during a storm anymore. It's so scary. And I don't understand, okay, this makes no sense to me, but they tell you not to be near a window, right? So I have these sliding glass doors pretty much about 15 feet away from where I sit in my chair in the living room. My grandfather and everyone, my father, they always say, just close the blind. So if lightning hits your window, my curtain's going to stop it from coming through. That makes no sense to me, right? I mean, how, how does that, how does closing your curtain gonna stop lightning from coming through? That's crazy. I had a boss at Wendy's, I'm pretty sure I've told the story before, but there, his house, when they built it, they didn't put the, they didn't ground it properly with the lightning rods that we have to have here in our houses. For every square feet, you have to have a lightning rod. And they didn't put one in his house or they didn't put enough. So lightning kept hitting his house and it would come from his kitchen floor and come up out of the floor up into the roof of his house and everything so all the tiles in his floor kept blowing out and everything that is just so scary so since we have a couple minutes and I'm gonna let you guys go but I just want to say something I'm going to be switching up the blocks that we're making and everything now I know I have my hardcore people that watch whatever video I put out no matter what and I really appreciate that the Friday morning block video is getting hardly any views and from an analytic standpoint because this is my job and how I earn my money I have to make sure that I'm doing the best I can and those videos aren't getting half to even less than half of the views stupid nets than the other videos so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to putting a tutorial Friday morning and then on the live stream, we'll keep working on the blocks because I said we're gonna make blocks for a year and I don't want anyone to have half of a quilt made because I gave up making blocks partway through the year. So on the live stream, we can still sit and chat and we'll do the blocks and everything like that. Thank you, Rose. So we'll do that. And then in the morning, I'll give you guys some type of a tutorial. 
Thank you, Marie. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, Gwenny. I know, I know, but I just need to make sure that, and it's not just today. I went back and checked analytics, so every three to six months I do a deep dive in and I check to see how certain types of videos are doing. And you may look at a video today, let's say you watched Whip It Wednesday video and it has a thousand views. So that's great, that's great for Wednesdays and this week's views. But three months from now you can go back and look at a video and it might be up to 2,000. Some of the tutorial videos get, you know, 500,000 views, 25,000 views. They don't get much to start with, but in the long run, they do really well. So I need to make sure, as so I want to check back and see how these videos have been doing all year, they're not doing that well. So I'd rather go ahead and put a tutorial in place and then we can keep doing. Thanks, Gwenny. You have to. Thanks, Michelle. I really do appreciate, you know, that everyone watches the videos and when I put them down in the comments that you guys go back and watch them if you haven't seen them before. I really appreciate all that and I just want to make sure that everyone is getting, I want to make sure first of all I've learned that I have to take care of myself first. That's a very, very hard thing to do I think, especially for a woman and a mother because you're so used to putting the world ahead of yourself. So I need to make sure that I'm doing what's right for me what's right for you guys and what makes sense business-wise because my YouTube channel isn't just a place to hang out and chatter which it is because I love talking to everybody but at the same time I have to make sure that it makes sense financially for myself because I can't go to work and have a normal nine-to-five job my body just can't handle it so that's gonna be a little change up so you guys in case you notice on the next I took my calendar down. When's our next live stream? Today is July. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Happy Canada Day, everybody. I knew I wanted to remember that and I totally forgot it. I got so excited about the charm squares. Happy Canada Day. Happy 4th of July on Monday. I hope everyone is doing something fun. I. I am working on my Whip It Wednesday video, I'm sure. I, it's nothing special to me. I will watch the fireworks outside. All of my neighbors will put off a show. The trees have grown too tall now for me to see like the city fireworks and everything. But our next live stream is on the 15th. And by reopening up the morning tutorial, it did what I needed it to do. It made sure that I had something to do and I didn't have to think about the tutorial, but now that I'm in a better organizational space, I'd like to get back to doing tutorials Friday morning because we need to start working on the sewing machine cover. We need to do a basic one and then we need to, I want to fancy it up a little bit. So we'll do another block on the 15th and then on the 29th, there are five Fridays this month. So on the 29th, at 3 p.m. We're not going to go live, but I'm going to try to do a premiere. I've done premieres before. I don't know if you guys have seen premieres before, but it's when you take a, re the YouTuber takes a recorded video. So I have a video, let's say for this morning's block that I did, the windmill block. So I've already pre-recorded that video and it's going to play like a normal video. The premiere part of it comes that the people that are in the comment section can talk live. So you're not just leaving a comment, you're talking like you are right now. And I'm in the comment section chatting with you. So I can be sitting here working on my embroidery blocks. I can be sewing, but you guys can't see me or hear me, but you'll be watching me on the video and you can ask questions about the video and you can just chat among each other like you're doing now. So we're gonna do that on the extra day since we have, an, we have way too many Fridays. July tends to always have five Fridays, July or August. So we're gonna try that on the 29th. I'll do a little, at the beginning of the video, I'll explain what a premiere is again, and the video will play, and then we can all chat live during it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First of all, is it Inga? Is that how you pronounce your name? The post-traumatic stress is really hard. The fireworks are loud. 
they scare me because I oh, I live in a wood frame house. It's it's old, and I just I always worry so much because. We've had fireworks land on the house before. We've had little fires in the yard when people lit them off. And that's when we didn't have neighbors very much. Now we have neighbors everywhere and they're all just out drinking and laughing and having fun and lighting off fireworks. It's scary. Good, I got, I got one right. I usually get 50-50. I can say it two different ways and I, one of them's usually right. But that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start switching things up a little bit and seeing how things go. We're gonna keep with the random bonus video. I still need to film one to just discuss the Patreon channel and stuff like that. Apparently with this calendar from the Dollar Tree, when you write on it, it goes all the way through to the other pages. Do you guys know it's less than six months now to Christmas? Oh, Gwenny, fireworks, because of all the rain, there's only been one individual firework going off each night. I think one of my neighbors is just determined to light a firework off, but normally they light off fireworks for a week and a half before and a week and a half after and then of course the 4th of July is the worst. Wendy, it's Christmas in July. We have to have the countdown. If you guys are making Christmas gifts, it might be a good time, especially a lot of you uh, ladies and gentlemen are retired or if you're still working. We all kind of know what it is to go to school. We've done that and we've watched our kids and grandkids go to school. I've started treating my day like on a block schedule. And that would, our kids, they have like eight classes. They go to four classes on Monday and then four classes on Tuesday for, well, it's changed now, but that's basically how a block schedule goes. So you work, you go to half your classes each day, every other day. So you, get, you can go for like two hours for a class that way. So I've been scheduling things like, okay, for this two hour schedule right here, I'm going to work on this video. And then in this two hours, I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give myself an hour for lunch. I'm gonna eat lunch in like 15 minutes and then I'm gonna have some fun and sew something fun and then start back in. That's the only way I can stay sane, Gwenny. I I keep forgetting things. I lose track of what I'm working on. I bounce from project to project and I don't get things finished. I'm trying to get, my goal is to be six months ahead on my videos, except for like Whip It Wednesday, cause you know, you can't really get ahead on that one. I'm trying to get at least a month ahead to start with. It's kind of like saving for your budget, for your financials and stuff. You kind of want to have a, a, a savings account. I want to have videos in the bank so that if I want to take a week off or if I unfortunately catch a stupid summer cold and I'm sick and I can't do it. Well, that's what my weekends and my evenings are for, to go totally crazy and to not have a schedule. I was trying to schedule myself Monday through Sunday and it was just too much there was no days off and even though my days off are just going to be sewing did you guys hear that there's no thunder and lightning now that I turned off my sewing machine it's crazy so even if my days off are sewing for the shop I still you know I enjoy that and it's not something I have to do so I want to have those days where I can just do whatever I want so if I schedule my weeks my Monday through Fridays, then I can, you know, go crazy on the weekends. I finished my, my little zipper pouches. I finished them and I got them listed in the shop. That was one of my blocks this morning. I had to, I leave notes for myself the night before because when I go to sleep, my mind gets erased and when I wake up, I forget what I wanted to do. So part of it was to set up the YouTube and then I had to get these listed. So these are all done. These were made because of the seam allowances. They're made just like the original ones I did with the binding around it. 
but because of the seam allowance, they're actually a little bit smaller. And I didn't even, my brain didn't make that connection. So when I listed them, I had to like change numbers. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. This is still one of my favorites. I like this one. This one. Yeah, Anita, that's how it's fun. You know, I don't have, I'm not working, you know, I never worked Mondays through Fridays anyways. I was always the parent that worked whatever schedule around my husband. So we didn't have to put the kids in daycare. We had a very short amount of time when they stayed with my stepmother or when they were in a daycare for like before school started. But we wanted to make sure that we raised our children and we were able to Rob worked during the day and I worked in the afternoons and evenings to balance it out. Exactly, Gwenny. I just, with Etsy, you can press the copy button. So once I make this listing, I make it generic so I don't talk about the fabric because you can see the pictures. You can see if it's a Santa fabric versus a pumpkin fabric. So I make sure the title and the tags and everything are specific, but in the general description box, I just tell you how to care for it, what size it is, and give you some ideas on how to use it. So that way I just have to hit copy and change the pictures. So I don't have to relist them every time. So that's the only reason I even knew the sizes were different because I just had to change them. Husband number three. But I'm gonna let everyone go. Enjoy the rest of your Canada day because if you're over on the West Coast, it's still quite a few hours earlier. Happy 4th of July to everyone. I hope the weekend is calm for everyone. And for those of you that don't do well with fireworks and for who has pets that don't do well with fireworks, I wish you well. My cats, my cats do pretty good until the big bangs and the ones that go zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
tight jacket that just hugs the dog really firmly with Velcro and apparently that works to calm a lot of them down. Oh, thank you, Donna. Yep, they're all listed down there. There's, um, I have them in categories or you can just scroll through and look at that. I don't know if the wool hat mufflers would work. Yeah, it's called a thunder, thunder coat, I think it's called. Thunder jacket, thunder coat. I think it's a thunder coat. All right, guys, you guys have a great evening. Enjoy your dinner, whatever you're gonna have. I have set aside honey barbecue wings for the 4th of July, because that sounded like a good idea. Tonight is simple hot dogs, because after a live stream, I don't wanna cook. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.